Hello everyone, particularly two set fans who have asked me to do this video. I'm Liam, a professional violist, luthier, and as of recently, a bow maker. This evening I will be giving you my thoughts on Brett and Eddie's new violins and clearing up some things they didn't quite get right about the construction. I will be doing videos in the future as well, covering topics such as different types of strings, different types of bows, where to find affordable instruments, and there will be a separate series on tutorials regarding violin technique, viola technique, and also the construction and history of those instruments. If you have any questions at all, please just put them in the comment section below and I will answer as many of them as possible. So let's look at the original video. So um, yeah, this beauty. It was very different, you guys. Should we show them close up? Yeah. And explain the difference. Mine's a two piece wood at the back. Mine's one piece. Eddie's a one piece. So you can see kind of like the difference. Eddie's got this one, where mine's is split here. Mm. No real difference. It's just kind of your preference, right? Just aesthetic. My. Okay, so it's not just aesthetic. Um, there's a process in violin making where you tune the plates. And what this means is. You can scrape away some wood um, on, on both sides, uh, at the top and the back. Um, you might, uh, you might uh, scrape away some of the top and when you tap on it, it will sound like an E-flat or an E-natural. And depending on what you get, um, you can take away some of the harshness of the E-string or even add some body to the, to the G. Uh, so with the back as well, um, oh by the way, the, the top is always in two halves of spruce put together. Um, so that gives a mirrored, uh, the, you'll see the, the rings, uh, the grain of the wood sort of match and mirror. So that makes it incredibly easy to tune. But the back, if you, if you have the two halves put together, it's easy to tune. But if you have a one piece, you, you actually have to scrape away and plane away different areas because it's not mirrored anymore. So if you're aiming to get a G or a G flat, you might scrape off something on the treble side and you tap it and it gives a bit of a, a G. Then when you scrape away some of the bass side, you might get a G as well, but then the other side has gone to an F sharp. So it gets a little trickier that way. Um, and you don't want to mess that up because it will give you wolf notes and other problems, maybe response as well in playing the violin or viola. So, okay, we'll continue with the next part. Hey, pegs are slightly also different here of Eddie's. Yours is varnished in black a bit, mine's fully just wood, brown. Mine's more interesting. Not varnished, by the way. Um, those are called collars on the pegs and they are made out of turned ebony. Um, so they're a little bit like washers, just everyday washers from Bunnings, and they're just fitted on after the construction of the peg. So it's a separate part to the peg. Brown. Well, that's more interesting. Yeah. Now, uh, His is more interesting. I have, I have them on mine. I, I have them here. Uh, one of them actually broke off when I was frantically tuning during a concert. Um, and that was not fun for me to look at. It doesn't make any difference. Except that if you have a bit of broken collar, it might be the cause of a buzz. So if your violin is buzzing and you can't figure out what's going on, it could be that you have a loose collar there because they are just glued on. Now our tailpiece is also different. My tailpiece is like one piece, yours is split. <gasps> so I think my instrument over- Okay, the next thing, um, the one piece, tailpiece and the two-piece tail no there isn't a two-piece tail tailpiece um, just because you need as much strength as possible in the tailpiece so this one is made from uh, teetle wood and as you can see it's kind of hollow hollowed out semi hollowed out uh, there as well it's very thin there where the where the tail guts we call it goes through so you would lose lose strength if you if you glued these two two halves together. Um, so mine has the ridge that that 
Eddie's has, and this is called a hill style tailpiece. The rounder ones are called just round tailpieces or French style. So I think my instrument overall seems a bit more curvature round mm. in terms of the design, but yours is a bit more like sharp. Mm. All I know is my violin is so much more powerful than my old one. Yeah, so Eddie says they're more powerful. Yes, these I, I love that these two got upgraded violins. Uh, I think they sound wonderful. And I really can't wait to hear them play with an orchestra because I think these violins will sound quite vibrant and carry out over an orchestra. Um, they are very rich in colour as well, but we will look at the video uh, with their playing samples and I'll discuss that as well. My old violin, I struggled a lot with projecting mm -hmm. over an orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, I actually played on that violin since I was like, I think, 11 or 10. The new one. Now mine? Yeah, so straight away it's more vibrant and it really sings. Uh, yeah, the vibrancy comes from, I would say, slightly thinner wood used for the top and back and also the age of the wood um, and how it's aged so i think brett's older violin was probably a german factory instrument meaning that uh, a few people had a hand in making it and they might have gone too thin or too thick uh, and not communicated well so someone might have put on a thick back, someone else might have put on a very thin front, and so it hasn't really aged that well. Um, there'll be another video on that later. My air condition is playing up. Okay. Sorry about that. So, yes, with these violins, they are, Eddie's and Brett's are both made by the same luthier, and I think in the same amount of time, the same year. Um, so there is a great consistency between the two, but also because it's one maker, they have an idea of the sound and they can make a very solid violin, uh, trying to hit the standards of Antonio Stradivari or uh, Guarneri Don Gesù or Andrea Amati, considered to be the three greats of violin making from the 18th century. Now mine. I don't know if you guys can hear, but it already sounds a bit more fuller. Yeah, I think I prefer Eddie's because it has a darker tone so I can hear more overtones from the D and the and the G so when he's playing his his A string it sounds more like oh uh, but I'm not the best singer by the way but yes Eddie's Eddie's violin sort of goes wah and Brett sort of goes mm. it's a very subtle thing and um, I should probably get some singing lessons. Um, could you hear a difference between Eddie's and Brett's? Comment if you want to, and tell me what you, uh, how you would describe the sound. I think they're very different. Um, I should point out as well that Brett has dominant strings on his violin, and those, they don't project as much as the strings that Eddie's using, which are Eva Parazzi. Eva Parazzi are quite bright strings, but have a dark quality to them as well on the right instrument. If he had Eva Parazzi on some sort of 19th century instrument from France, it might be it might be too overbearing, and it might just go zing and really not be pleasant on the ears at all. Um, Parazzi's usually work on most antique uh, 
fine Italian violins. Uh, same as dominance as well. There's a slight misconception here that if you have any violin, say you've just bought your new full-size violin and you, you upgrade from whatever the factory put on to Ava Parazzi or Dominant or Vision, uh, so many different strings, um, Daddario, uh, that your violin will just sound so much better, but there really is a match for your violin. It's, it's almost like dress sense. It's, you, you will know what works for you after trialing a few uh, types of strings. Uh, if Brett wanted to get a similar tone to Eddie, he could switch the dominant strings to something like obbligato, uh, which is the most similar set of strings to Ava Parazzi, made by the same company, Parastro. Um, I think they're also playing on very different bows, and much like the tailpiece uh, and the plates of the violin, the bow can also be tuned, more or less. Um, I'll put in a video now of the tailpiece when, when you hit it. I don't think you'll be able to hear it there, but here's the video. And could you hear a massive difference there between tailpiece A B and C. In regards to the bow, um, I haven't done a video on the tone of the stick of the bow, but um, if I play an excerpt for you now, this is a very lightweight bow, made in America, an unknown maker, so it did come from just a factory. best bow, which is an old French bow. It's more vibrant and it just works. It just works so well for me. But if I played a very harsh sounding viola, it could be way too much. It could just be metal city. So Brett and Eddie could swap bows and they might sound like they're playing the same violin, given that their violins are made by the same maker. So yes, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below and I will get to them as soon as possible. I will also put my email in the description below so if you want to send me pictures of your violin or viola or your bows even, um, I'll be able to probably tell you a little bit about them, such as where they came from uh, country-wise, or even identify a maker here or there. Uh, the same thing with bows as well. I can't promise anything, but I'll give you my best opinion. And it's all free as well. Thank you and have a good evening. I hope to see you at the next one.